The Bethesda Temple live stream media team will be taking a short break on Sunday, June 13th and Wednesday, June 16th. There will be no live stream messages. However, we will resume live stream services on June 20th. In lieu of the live stream services, we have selected a couple of replay messages that will air on June 13th and on Wednesday, June 16th. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We greet you in the majesty name of Jesus. We give honor to the elect lady of this house, my wife, and to all the saints and friends. We say praise the Lord. We greet you, those who watch us by Facebook and YouTube. We praise God you've given us the privilege of coming to your home. And, and we're going to read and study the word of God. And I pray God today we have something that would bless your soul today, that will strengthen you and to build you up in the most holy faith. We're going to get right into the lesson uh, this evening. We're going to be talking about the power of choice. The power of choice. It was part of our resurrection message. We talked about how the Son of God, as Mark writes him, had choice. And Jesus chose to go to Capri. Uh, we say that he told his father not my will but let thy will be done and this is kind of a continuation of resurrection sunday we decided to teach on the power of choice and we want to set some parameters for the class uh this evening we one going to talk about adam and eve choice they had choices that they needed to make and how god would not intervene in their choices not only that, we're going to be talking about the power of the Holy Ghost as it relates to uh, helping us uh, understand and define the right choices in our lives. And we're going to talk about the, 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 the power points of the Holy Spirit, how that the Holy Spirit was designed to help us uh, make good choices. And then after that, we, we want to go to Matthew and we're going to talk about how that Jesus said you can't serve two masters. You either love one or hate the other. So we should have an exciting time tonight and as we go into the sacred word of God to the book of Genesis where we want to start 2 and 16 first. It says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge and of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. We see here that God had placed Adam and Eve in the garden and told Adam to be a keeper of the garden. Not only that, he gave them choice. He let them eat freely of every tree, but that which is a tree of knowledge of good and evil. He told them not to eat. They were faced with choices. They were faced with choices. And you know the story. We don't have time to go on into the whole story, but we see how they made the wrong choice. Notice something about God. God could have stopped them and allowed them to make the right choices. But what God, out of his ultimate will, he decided that they should make their choices. And one thing that he did, he, he, he not only did uh, they make the choice, but God did not stop them from making the choice. And we found out that, that he went on in agreement with them, with them making a bad choice. And you know the story, they was expelled out of the Garden of Eden because they made bad choices. And I believe that we are in the empowerment by the Holy Spirit to make our own choices. Uh, even though that God could interfere with human affairs, he does not. Uh, 
He allow you to make your own choice. Somebody said, well, why, Pastor, would he allow us to, 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 to do such a thing when he know we're not able to do it? Where well, he gave us the highest intellect of his creation. He gave us a mind to reason, to know right from wrong. So he gave us what we needed to make good decisions. And some would probably argue the fact that before we got the Holy Spirit, we didn't have power to make these right choices. You are absolutely right because then we were under the law, but now we are under grace. And now that we are under grace, God has given us what we need in the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And after saying that, we want to go to the book of St. John. And we want to look at uh, the 14th chapter there. After saying that, let's get on over to the New Testament and look at St. John. Let me get to my place here. All right, St. John 14 and 16. I brought this in to our class because I wanted to show you that the Holy Spirit was designed to do certain things. And it has foundational principles by which it should work. And I just didn't want to tell you, I wanted to bring it out in the scripture. Okay, so let's look at verse number 16. Yes, St. John 14 and 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the, the world cannot receive, because it seeth and knoweth him not. For he dwelleth with you, and he shall be in you. Notice this. He said, I'm going to send you another comforter, which is, which is the Holy Ghost. And this comforter is going to abide with you forever. So even when you make bad decisions, the comforter, if you're saved, the comforter is still abiding with you. All right. I want to go over to verse number 26 of St. John, verse 26. He said, but the Holy Ghost, which but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall, number one, teach you. All right? He shall, number one, teach you. He shall, number one, teach you all things and bring all things, help me, Holy Ghost, back to your remembrance. Notice this. Notice this. He's going to teach you. And then he's going to bring things back to your remembrance. So if you're in a, in a bad predicament and you need to make a decision and a quick decision, the Holy Spirit, that's what he's there for. He's going to empower you to make the right decision. As I said on uh, uh, Resurrection Sunday, one of the things is our responsibility. We must yield over to the Holy Spirit. We must commit to say, Holy Spirit, whatever, whatever I need to do, I want you to help me, assist me, do that which I need to do. Because I know that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide me. And he says, whatsoever I have said unto you. So two things, he's going to teach you, and he's going to bring all, that's, that's important, he's going to bring all things back to your remembrance. It is powerful that the Holy Spirit is a teacher. As you read the word of God, as you come into acknowledgement of truth, he said, that's what you have read, that's what you have received, that's what you have been preached to, I'm going to bring it back to your remembrance. When you need it, I'm going to bring it back to you. When you need to make those powerful decisions in your life, he said, I'm going to bring it back to you. So, you know, somebody might say, well, Pastor, I'm kind of afraid that I'm going to make the wrong decision. Well, there's no need to have fear in your life as it relates to decision making because he has given you power of the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. And he said, he's going to teach you and bring all things back into your remembrance. And then he go lead and guide you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How can you go wrong if he go guide you? Bring all things back to your remembrance. And he's going to be a teacher. What a disconnect deal. This is not with the word of God. The disconnect is with your will. Is what you want to do. Because in the midst of decision making. You have to decide which way you want to go. Now, once you give over to the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit will do what it's designed 
to do. It will lead you right. It will guide you right. It will set you free. It will break your yokes. It's, it, it will do the things you need to do. But it can't do anything until you make the right decision. And that's yielding over to the Holy Spirit. It's so important that we yield over to the Holy Spirit. Uh, I want to say something else about the Holy Spirit. It, it, it gives you According to Acts, he said it gives you power. Yes, it does give you power. There is a redemption power in the Holy Ghost that once you get saved, the Holy Ghost comes into your life. But after the Holy Ghost comes into your life, then the Holy Ghost will give you the power to make choices. And this is what I really want to hammer home this evening is that the Holy Ghost helps you once you yield, helps you once you yield over to that because the Holy Ghost is not going to make you do nothing. The Holy Ghost ain't going to force you to do nothing. You can shout, how come I see all this stuff? He said, but the Holy Ghost ain't going to force you to do that. You got to say, you got to have an understanding that I want to yield this situation over to the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times, God will just let you just tarry with that problem as long as you want to keep it. Until you make up your mind that I don't want to be this way no more. I, I want deliverance in my life. And that's when you yield over to the Holy Spirit. See, even Jesus was hanging, uh, getting ready to go to Calvary. He had to yield even though he knew he was going to Calvary. He knew he was going to die. He had to submit and yield. And he said, Father, not my will, but let thy will, that that it yielding is, be done. So it's very, very, very important that you uh, not only as you make the right choices, but understand the process, I like to say, of choices. And every believer must understand the process of choices because you have to yield over. God's not going to make you do anything. And as a man speaketh, so is he, the power of the tongue. And a lot of times, you have, as I said Sunday, you have to confess and, and, and call things out that you want the Holy Spirit to destroy in your life. And a lot of time, once you call it out and, and relieve the, the, the power of imprisonment in your life, then the Holy Spirit would drive that spirit out. I've never seen anyone in my ministry that wanted to be delivered that didn't get delivered. If you want to be delivered, then you can surely get delivered. It's very, very, very important that you yield over, that you yield over to the Holy Spirit. As I said again, the power of choice. Tonight I want to talk about those mechanics, those little process things, uh, those little foundational things in choice with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit just guides you. It, it, it leads you. It's not going to force you, as I said again. It ain't going to force you to do anything. And you must understand that he is your friend. He's a comforter. The Bible said he's going to abide with you for Ever. He's not going to leave you, and if you yield to him, he'll guide you right. If you want to be happy, you can make yourself happy by yielding and say, Holy Spirit, I need you to come into my life, and I need you to do what you do, because I really, really want to be delivered. I really, really want to be healed, and it's very, very important that you speak that in your life. Let's go to Acts now. Let's go to Acts now. I want to pull this into Acts 2 and verse number Acts 2 and 4 verse number 4 it says and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them other men. Now in this passage of scripture this is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in your life. This is what you need to make choices. Alright. But a lot of times we get hung up on the power of the Holy Ghost. And don't understand the implementation. as what God has designed the Holy Spirit uh, to do. He is the mediator. He is the operation. The administrator. I like to say of the body of Christ. And he will work things out in your life. I want to go to Romans now. Oh hallelujah. Romans 10 and 10. And I, I want to show there. Uh, the confession, or 10 and 9 I should say, uh, the confession that we have to make even into salvation. Uh, Roman 10 and 9. It said, that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. You have to believe and confess. That's your decision making that you have to make 
before you can enter into the kingdom, you have to confess that he is Lord and believe that he is your Savior. And once you confess and believe, those decisions you have to make. See, no candidate should be forced to be baptized. It's his decision. No candidate should be put in a predicament that he has no choice but to go to the water. According to scripture, he should have free will. Even the sinner ought to have free will to come to Jesus. Because he said, whosoever will, let him come. He must make his own decision. And that's why I think we need to pull back a little bit on these candidates and make sure that they really want the Lord. And if they want the Lord, it's our job. It's our job. We're committed to it. It's our job to take them to the water. It's our job to tell them they need to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of their sins. But we don't want to get in such a hurry. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost, tonight. That we take away folks' choices coming into the kingdom. Because a lot of times, if they don't choose to be saved, if they're not ready to be saved, then a lot of times they won't stay in the church. They won't stay in the church because they didn't make their own decision. And, 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 and according to the word of God is that we should preach to them and the word of God should convict them. No one with a silver tongue or fast tongue should talk them into anything. They should be convicted by the word of God and said, my God, I want to be saved. My God, I want the Lord in my life. And I believe once the word of God will convict them and they make their own choice, I believe without a shadow of a doubt, they'll make a true sight of God. They'll be anchored in the body of Christ and they'll be able to enjoy the liberty of the Holy Ghost. And it's very, very important, as I said, that we should allow them to make that choice. Even if you're saved, even if you're saved, God's still allowing you to make your choice. Even if you got the Holy Ghost, you still got to make choices. And you don't always make the right choices, but we pray to God that we can repent and come back to the Lord and say, God, I did it my way. Uh, it didn't work out, but I now need the Holy Spirit to come. And remember now, you must submit to the Holy Spirit. You can't just say, come into my life. You got to open up the door and let him into your situation. And I think when you do that, there's an agreement between you and the Holy Spirit. And, and then the Holy Spirit is obligated. I just love this. He's obligated to set you free. He's obligated to do what you need done by the power of God. And he's not short of the word of the Lord. It is very, very, very important that we allow the power of choice not only to come in our lives when we receive the Lord Jesus and when we first get saved, but it must be a continuation on in our lives. All right. And there's certain choice. See, you've got to choose to come to church. You, you, you got to choose to obey the word of God. And you got to do it with joy. You can't, you can't be grievous all the time. Every time you want to do something for God. Because you ain't made the right choice. If somebody got to make you do something. Uh, uh, force you to do it. Then you didn't make the right choice. But when you make the right choices. Ain't nobody got to force you to do anything. You'll come willingly. You'll come openly. Because you understand that I need to serve this God. That brought me out of darkness. Into the marvelous light. And I say to you tonight, hallelujah, glory to God. It's nothing like making the right choices and being free to serve the Lord. That's what the Bible means, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Holy Ghost don't force nobody to shout. Don't force nobody to rejoice. Don't force nobody to praise Him. But it's down in our soul. We have made our decision to praise the Lord. And it doesn't matter who's looking at me. Don't matter what you think. Don't matter what I've been through in the week. When I make up my mind to praise the Lord. And I've committed to that. And every time I come to the house of God. I want to give God glory. I want to give God praise. It is very, very, very important. I'm about to be on my way out. Matthew's the 6th chapter. I want to go back to that. Uh, Matthew the 6th chapter. And we want to look at. Verse 24, I think it's what it is. Yeah, verse 24. All right. Now I want you to keep this scripture here. No man can serve two masters, for he either will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot 
notice that ye cannot serve God and man you cannot you cannot serve two masters you got to give over either to the Holy Spirit or you got to give over to the flesh and you would think my God that scripture should have been applicable before one got saved but even after you get saved you got to lose sight on the world you got to choose whose side you own even though you got saved there is a choice you have to make and you got to choose to I'm gonna say that again you got to choose to serve the Lord. And if you choose to serve the Lord, and serving the Lord ain't hard for folk who choose to serve him. But if you straddle the fence, if you're trying to serve two masters, if you're trying to keep up with the world and keep up with the church, it's going to be hard living for the Lord. But I'm telling you, there ain't no trouble in God's waters when you make up your mind that you're going to serve the Lord. I found out this is how saints grow. Saints grow by decision making. You have to make up your own mind to serve the Lord. And somebody said, well, I tell you what, I ain't been in church long enough to do this and to do that. But once you make up your mind, the Holy Ghost will start working with you. The Spirit of God will start building you up in the most holy faith. And all of your shortcomings will begin to be rolled away. Sometimes you can praise your way out of mess. Sometimes you can thank your way out of mess. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I'm so glad I made my choice tonight as I leave. Praise God. It ain't hard for me to serve the Lord. And I believe, my God, there's freedom in the house of the Lord. I ain't got no taskmaster because Jesus has set me free. Why should I be bound tonight? And I tell you tonight I'm free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm free tonight and I'm in my right mind and I want to give God the praise. I want to bless the Lord because he's been so good to me. He's been my mother when mother was gone and father when father was gone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I praise God. I got a willingness of a mind tonight to praise ye the Lord. As we get ready to leave you tonight, I want you to just evaluate and find out where you are in the Lord. Are, are, are you made your choice. Have you made the right decision? Uh, amen. Is living for the Lord really free for you? Amen. It shouldn't be hard once you make up your mind that you're going to serve the Lord. And I thank God tonight the power of choice. I pray you won't lose this class for a while. I'll be meditating on it, think about it, go back through the scripture, read on it because your choices will determine your future. Your choices will determine the promises of God in your life. Your choices will determine whether you be bound or whether you be free. And I pray tonight that you make the right choices and commit to the Holy Spirit coming in your life and serving God. Hallelujah. Somebody said in the old church, serving the Lord will pay off after a while. And I tell you, God bless you tonight in the medicine name of Jesus. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Manley right here at Frankfort, Kentucky, the capital city. We want to thank God for all of you who have been following us and sending us messages. My God, we've enjoyed this COVID journey where we're streaming every week and I appreciate God for you allowing us to come in your home. You're allowing, giving us the time that you would listen to the broadcast. And I just thank God. God has done great things since we've been on this streaming program. And I praise God that this ministry has been able to bless you and keep you and lift you up in the most holy faith. And I want to say thank God to you. Hallelujah to make this thing what it is. God bless you and may the Lord keep you in Jesus name. Praise the Lord, and thank you for joining us today. Whether you're joining us live or whether you're joining us through YouTube or Facebook, we welcome you to Bethesda Temple Church of the Living God. Our leaders are Bishop Robert Manley Jr. and Elect Lady Deborah Manley. Our weekly service times are as follows. Join us on Sunday in person at 1115 a.m. We stream live from YouTube and Facebook on Sundays around 11.45 a.m. You can also catch Bible class on Wednesday afternoons at 4.30 p.m. That is streamed live from Facebook and YouTube. Bethesda Temple offers three ways to give to the ministry. You can give using your credit or debit card. You can give using the Square app, and that link can be found on our Facebook page. You can give by mailing to P.O. Box 1006, Frankfort, Kentucky 40602. 
You can also give in person during Sunday morning service, or you can drop off on Wednesdays between 4.30 and 5.30 p.m. Bethesda Temple Women's Ministry will have its next Women of Excellence Zoom Fellowship on June 12th at 10 a.m. Zoom link information can be found on our Facebook page, Bethesda Temple Women of Excellence. Offerings to remember, your tithes and regular church offering, your building fund pledge, blessing basket, your pastor's love offering on the first and third Sundays, and the women's fellowship offering for cleaning supplies. Christian Education with Bethesda will have weekly uploaded Sunday school lessons on our YouTube channel. Please enjoy lessons taught by Deacon Al Gordon and Evangelist Barbara Gordon. Thursday night prayer will be held on the first Thursday in June and the last Thursday in June. Join us for an hour of prayer live on Zoom. As we enter the month of June, we have a new prayer theme focus. June's prayer focus will be centered around fathers. We want to pray that God give fathers strength and courage as they lead, love, and guide their children. Father's Day is coming up soon. We want to remind you that we will have a special guest in the house on Father's Day. Pastor Jay Stevens will be our special guest speaker. The Bethesda Temple women will be collecting a love offering for Sister Linda Montgomery. We will collect this love offering through the month of June until July 11th. Please give your offering to Sister Tara Manley. Again, you have until July 11th to contribute. Thank you in advance to all the Bethesda Temple women for your contribution and blessings to everyone. Thank you, Elect Lady Manley and Evangelist Barbara Gordon. Join Evangelist Zenobia Skinner for her radio program, Truth and Love, on Sundays at 7.45 p.m. on 99.1 WJMM. From the Honorable Bishop and Elect Lady Deborah Manley, we thank you for joining us today and adhering to our weekly announcements.